OK, so here we're looking at hammers. And what we want to make sure is that we've got a good quality hammer that's safe to use, that does its job properly, and will continue to do so for some time. So we check that it's a good make, that there's no signs of any uh, damage to it, any chips or so forth, and that it's got a new proper hardwood handle properly wedged and painted with linseed oil on the wood and uh, engineering oil on, on the metal to protect it. So we're confident that this is going to be safe and good to use for some time to come. So this is what we're aiming for and we start off of course with the head. This ball pane hammer head has had the old shaft removed, it's been cleaned. We haven't spent a lot of time making it shiny or painting it, but it is clean, it's acceptable um, to be used. A tip is to make sure that it's clean in the middle as well. So having chosen the, the head, we now have to choose the shaft or handle to go with it. We have a range of different sizes. This is by no means all of them, but just a selection I've brought along for the sake of this, this video. What we need to do is to look at the top of the handle and see how it fits the eye, because we want to make sure that that's as strong and as tight fitting as possible. This one would certainly do it. We could trim it down, but there is quite a lot of room of play in there. This one is a slightly larger end, which is good and tight. By the time we trim that, that'll be a nice snug fit. So in this case, I tend to go for this one. So now, of course, we have to fit the, the handle to, to the head. So we're going to need to shape it and reduce some of the wood. Here I'm using a carpenter's vise. So strictly speaking, I don't need to protect the handle too much since we've got the wooden jaws there. But it doesn't hurt to use something else, and certainly if you're using an engineer's vise, you do need to protect this handle. Here we have a piece of, um, I think it's polypropylene pipe, which works very well to protect the handle and hold it tightly. So I'm going to use that as I put it in the vise. So we, don't, we know we don't have that much material to move from the handle to, to fit the head because although it won't quite go on, it's not very much too big. So we need to take it slowly, a little bit at a time, and keep trying it to make sure that we don't go too far and end up with it loose. Now people use different tools to, to shape the wood. Personally, I like a spoke shave. I find it's uh, very controllable, gives a nice fine finish. Other people like to use a chisel or a rasp. Whatever you use, the important thing is to make sure that you take a little bit at a time and you take it all the way around the handle so that you don't take more off one side than the other and end up with it being crooked. So I've just taken a little bit off all round, now I'm going to take it out of the vise and try it. At this point we need to apply a little bit of force to get it down and there are different ways of doing this. Some people like to put it over a vise and hit it with a mallet. Obviously you don't want to use a hammer on the wood, that's one way. Other people will put it inside the vise using a piece of wood to protect the bottom of the handle from the base of the vise and hit the top of the, the hammerhead. Personally, I prefer to use the, uh, the shock tactics, if you like, by hitting it on, on a firm surface such as an anvil. So a firm tap on here and it will move itself down onto the shaft. And you can see that it's filling in the eye of the head quite nicely there. And I think we can say at this stage already, it's just about filled in the edges. There are no big gaps there. It's tight around the base there. It's at right angles, as far as one can tell. So we're pretty well there already. We just need now to take it off again and to cut it ready for wedging. So hopefully we've got this fairly tightly fitted in here, so 
question is, how do we get it out? Well, if you're lucky enough to have a fly press or an arbor press, that makes it easy. But it's not all that tricky. You can put it back in the vise. This time, of course, I'm holding the head in the vise, not the handle. Nice and tight. And with a piece of wood or an old hammer handle or something like that, I should be able to knock it out with too, without too much difficulty. OK, so I'm confident I've got the, the handle the right shape and the right size. It is a little bit uneven round there, so I'm going to put it back in the vise. And before I, I cut the slot for wedging it, I'm just going to smooth it round a little bit with some abrasive paper. And a little bit of 80 grit abrasive paper just to make sure it's nice and smooth and will fit well to the edges of the eye on the head. Now we're going to cut the slot which will enable us to put the wedge into the handle which will spread it at the top to stop it coming off. For this I'm going to use a tenon saw because being a back saw it's going to give a nice straight cut and won't wind about. We need to go what you could call longitudinally, the, the, the long way of, of, of the shaft in the centre and I generally aim to go approximately two-thirds of the depth of the handle. So we want to come to about there. Not a hard and fast thing, but thereabouts. I think that's about right. When we fit the head back on here, of course, the piece of wood that's inside the head will not be protected. So I'm going to put a little bit of linseed oil on at this stage, onto just the very top of the shaft here. This will both protect the wood once it's inside the head, and also act as a lubricant to make it that much easier to, to fit it on. This is the messy bit. Now in this rather disreputable pot is some boiled linseed oil. It doesn't have to be boiled, but it lasts a bit longer than the raw stuff. And I'm just going to paint it roughly on around here. Now I'm going to refit the head. And again, I'm going to do it on the anvil to make sure it sits down nice, nice and tightly. So I'm happy that that's seated all the way through. It's not going to move down and once I've wedged it there's no way it's going to move up again. So we're going to go back to the vise now and we're going to talk about the wedges that we put in it. So when I return it to the vise this time we're going to be driving down onto the handle so it's the handle that needs to be firm. So I'm going to make sure that this sits on the bars at the bottom of the vise to make sure that it doesn't move. To do that, of course, I'm going to put a piece of scrap wood in underneath just to protect the base of the handle. First of all, we're going to put in the wooden wedges. Now the wedges are made from hardwood we tend to use old beech wooden planes and so forth and cut them up on the bandsaw. But so long as it's a fairly close grained hardwood, anything will do. And it's very important that they're cut the correct way with the grain running down the length of the wedge. If it runs across, they will simply snap as you try to put them in. Obviously, you're going to cut different sizes for different handles and they're never going to fit exactly. In this case, I don't think I've got one quite the right length. So I'm going to take one of these and cut it down. So the wedge needs to be to about there. So a quick and simple way of reducing the width of this wedge is with a chisel. And a sharp tap should split it to approximately the right size. Now I'm going to drive that in using a hammer as far as I possibly can. Now this is quite a long wedge and it's quite thick so the chances are it won't go all the way and it may break off at the top but that's okay because you've still put enough in to spread the top of the handle. There it goes. 
So the wood wedge in there is now spreading in that direction the top of the handle to stop it coming off from the shaft. OK, so having put in the wooden wedge, the next stage is to wedge it at right angles. And for this, we use cast iron wedges. And we have a whole range of different sizes. Obviously, something like that is not going to fit. And something like that is only really suitable for a small pin hammer. So we're looking at uh, probably a number one, maybe a number two wedge for this. And if I offer them up, I can see that a number one wedge will just fit nicely across the width without fouling on the metal either side of the eye. And that's very important because that reduces the efficiency of the wedge. So I'm going to put two in. It's always a good idea to put two wedges in if you can. And if you need to slightly angle them, that's OK as well. The trouble with these being cast iron and going into hardwood, if I just hold it there and hit it with a hammer, it will probably ping out either across the workshop and or into my eye. So I'm going to prepare the slot first by just putting a chisel onto it and making a little slot so that it'll sit into it. Tap to make a little slot and then again two-thirds of the way along. OK, so now I'm going to fit the, the metal wedges. Um, if they, especially if you've got short, fat fingers like mine and it's a particularly small wedge, people sometimes use a pair of long-nosed pliers to hold it. I don't think we'll need it this time, but it's a tip that you can consider. OK, so we've got our head on the handle. It's wedged that way to stop it coming up that way, and it's wedged that way to hold it firmly at the top. It's a little bit rough on top, so I'm just going to put a rasp on that to finish it off. Sometimes you may find that the handle protrudes above the top of the eye of the hammer, in which case you can trim it off with something like a junior hacksaw first. OK, so hopefully we've got our hammer head successfully rehandled and properly wedged. I'm now going to test it, the moment of truth. And we've made this up just to test that the head doesn't move on the handle when you apply force. So I'm going to put it firmly in the vise. And simply by putting the hammer through and pulling sharply two or three times, I'll see if there's any movement and whether it's moved at all from being flush on the end there. Seems to be OK. The only operation left now is to preserve it. So we're going to paint the metal part with ordinary engine oil, cheap and cheerful, and the unprotected wood, as we did on the part that went in there, with boiled linseed oil. When it comes to ads eye, hammer heads, which mainly is for claw hammers where you have this rectangular sort of head, there's a slight difference. The handles are different, they already have this rectangular shape to them, and again it's a question of finding one that's the right sort of size and the right sort of eye to fit. And then everything carries on much the same as for the ball pane hammer that we've seen, except when you come to put the wedge in, you do the cut diagonally from corner to corner. Nobody's quite sure why, but this is the recommended method and you do find new hammers from manufacturers with it done that way. So instead of just going longitudinally, go from corner to corner and then carry on exactly as the same as for, for ball paint hammers. And the method really is the same for all sorts of hammers, lump hammers, sledge hammers, even axes and hatchets. They all pretty well follow the same pattern to make sure that it's wedged in two directions and is firm and safe to use. Thank you.